Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Sutta said a person incompetent to perform the three methods of shravana, kirtana, and manana shall install the shivalinga, phallic emblem, or murti, deity image, of Shiva, and worship them every day. Thus he can cross the ocean of worldly existence. As far as he can afford, without deceiving others, the devotee shall make gifts of gold and other forms of wealth, he shall offer them to the Shivalinga, or deity of Shiva. He must worship them constantly. The worship must be performed elaborately. Construction of platforms, ornamental portals, monasteries, temples, holy centers, etc., offerings of cloth, scents, garlands, incense, lamps with due piety, oblations of various cooked rice, pancakes, pies, etc., with side dishes, umbrellas, fans, chowries, yak tail fly whisks, with all paraphernalia. Everything shall be maintained in royal style for the worship of Shiva. In fact, all royal homage shall be paid. Circumambulation and obeisance with mantra japa according to capacity shall be performed. All the different usual rites in worship, like invocation, prayers, puja, etc., shall be maintained with due devotion. A person who worships the Shivalinga, or deity, in this manner will attain salvation even without Shravana, Kirtana, and Manana. Many noble men of yore have been liberated solely by this simple worship. The sages said, Everywhere the deities are worshipped only in their image. How is it that Shiva is worshipped both in the image and the linga? Sutta said, O sages, this question is holy and wondrous. I shall tell you what Shiva himself had said and what I heard from my own preceptor. Shiva alone is glorified as Nishkala, nameless and formless, since he is identical with the Supreme Brahman. He is also Sakala, as he has an embodied form. Thus he is both Sakala and Nishkala. Worship of his embodied form is appropriate for his Sakala aspect. Linga worship is appropriate for his Nishkala aspect. Since he has both Sakala and Nishkala aspects, he is worshipped in both the phallic and embodied form by the people and is called the Supreme Brahman. Other deities, not being Brahman, have no Nishkala aspect anywhere. Hence, other deities are not worshipped in the formless phallic symbol. Other deities are both non-Brahman and individual souls. In view of their being embodied only, they are worshipped solely in the bodily form. Shankara is Brahma Tattva, and the others are Jiva Tattva. This has been explained in the meaning of the Pranava, Aum, the essence of Vedanta, by Nandikeshwara, when asked by Sanat Kumara, the intelligent son of Brahma, at Mandara Mountain. Sanat Kumara said, The embodied form alone is often observed in the worship of deities other than Shiva, but both the phallic and embodied forms are seen only in the worship of Shiva. Hence, O Benevolent One, please tell me precisely, making me understand the truth. Nandikeshwara said, it is impossible to answer this question without revealing the secret of Brahman. 
O sinless one, since you are pious, I shall tell you what Shiva himself has said. Since Shiva has a bodiless aspect in virtue of his being the supreme Brahman, in conformity with the Vedic implication, the Nishkala Linga is used only in his worship. Since he has an embodied form as well, his embodied form is also worshipped and accepted by all people. According to the determination of the Vedas, the embodied form alone is to be used in the worship of other deities who are only individual embodied souls. Devas have only the embodied aspect in their manifestation. Both the phallic and the embodied forms are mentioned for Shiva in sacred literature. O oh, dear one, out of love for you I shall tell you the truth. Long, long ago, in the famous first Kalpa, the noble souls Brahma and Vishnu fought each other. To eradicate their arrogance, Lord Parameshwara showed his unembodied Nishkala form in the form of a column of fire in their midst. He revealed his phallic emblem, evolved out of the column, with the desire to bless the worlds. From that time onwards, the worship of both the divine phallus and embodied image were assigned to Shiva alone. The embodied form alone was assigned to deities other than Shiva. The embodied forms of the different devas yield only passing enjoyments. In regard to Shiva, worship of the phallic emblem and the embodied form together bestow both auspicious enjoyment and salvation.